Hey gentlemen, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for this devotional. I'm excited to begin a new series with you guys today through the book of 1 Timothy. Hopefully you got the scripture journal in your hands. Just a way for you to kind of take notes as we kind of journey through this book. The title of the series is It's Time to Clean Up the Church. So get ready for some hard-hitting material for our modern church. And before I dive in, I just want to say this. A quick thank you. To those of you out there who gave over the last week to the campaign that we put up on the website for those 17 guys who are looking for people to sponsor them for the coming retreat. This weekend, I have a retreat here based in the upper Midwest in Minnesota, and there are a number of guys coming, 17 of them you sponsored. Thank you. I want you to pray for those guys and for all the other men that will come as well, that God will meet them there, that they will meet with something that changes their spiritual trajectory forever. And we need your help with that as well. So today I'm not going to do a bunch of, you know, preliminary work here on historical matters and kind of bore you with those details. Instead, I'm just going to build the history as we go and make this experience way more fun. So today I'm just going to read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1, which is only the salutation of the book, but it's pretty important. Here's what it says. Paul an apostle, messenger of Christ Jesus by the command or authority of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, our hope. So who is this guy here? Now, his name is Paul, and Paul is a man that we used to know as Saul. So if you read the book of Acts, we discover that Saul was this high-ranking, wealthy, and very well-educated Jewish official who was one of the most vigorous opponents of Jesus and his followers. History tells us that he was so opposed to Jesus and the matter of his resurrection that he found malicious ways to justify the imprisoning, beating, and killing of Christians who followed Jesus. Now, this is the definition of a strong opponent. It's someone who spends his days contriving malicious ways to legally punish and murder people. Yet we learn that while all this is going on, Saul is in the process of actually hunting down followers of Christ, and then he meets with the resurrected Lord. Jesus appears to him on a road to Damascus and confronts him, which is crazy when you think about it because he's protesting the resurrection and Jesus. But because of this, Saul has this radical transformation that results in him becoming a follower himself. And not just that. He becomes one of the greatest proponents of the faith in history. And with this, he took on a name with a little bit of a different title. Instead of Saul, he became known as Paul. But know this, his transformation was so radical (laughs) that his past allies were Jews and his new ones found his testimony hard to believe. He was like caught between two worlds. His former allies, Jews, had a hard time believing it, but also do, so did a new Christian allies and relationships he tried to build. And just so you know, Paul would spend a lot of years, many years, reconciling the issues that arose from his newfound belief and his identity. You know, I think this is true for a lot of guys. I think one of the greatest challenges I think we all encounter is knowing and living in our identity in Jesus. It was true in Paul's time and hard for him and other people around him, and it's true in our time. While, fellas, we used to live in a time, right, that broadly accepted and permitted Christian belief, this is no longer the case in our world today. Jesus' name and Christian practices are being methodically removed from institutions of learning, from public gatherings, and even some churches, believe it or not. More radical ideologies are now taking their place and are even being publicly celebrated, right? Yet today, Christian beliefs kind of suffer shame as we share them. And this affects how we talk about and live out and find our way to knowing our identity in Christ. But Paul once said this in another letter he wrote, and it's so important. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Now, this is a very important declaration by Paul in the book of Romans. He's stating something deeply about what he believes about himself and what he is doing as a messenger of Jesus. This is why I believe Paul leads with this announcement to Timothy here in verse 1. It's not just a casual salutation here. 
This introduction is a statement of fact in a world that attempted to de-identify, re-identify, and even shame Paul. This is a statement about who Paul was as declared by God himself. Paul states here in verse 1 that he is a messenger of Jesus by command of the Most High God. So guys, you need to remember today that God finds no shame in you. Jesus bore your shame on the cross, and you should not be ashamed of who you are and what you believe. It makes no difference what others say about you. It makes no difference what you say about yourself or even what your past says about you. The only thing that matters is what God says about you. He is the one who makes men and remakes their identity. That's what Paul's declaring here. He can take opponents like you <laughs> and remake you into one of the greatest proponents of Christ ever. So live in this identity today, regardless of what comes your way, because the only identity that matters is the one that God gave to you. All that from a little verse. Imagine that. <laughs> Guys, I love you. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.